You want to stop this kneeling nonsense in the NFL, subvert what they're trying to do, and make the kneeling a symbol of supplication and reverence for the values that the flag stands for, rather than as some stupid symbol of defiance. That'll make Colin Kaepernick and his cronies feel stupid. Certainly if Trump himself is doing it for the reasons I just described. Imagine the supermarket. We've all been to the supermarket before. Big stores, aisles, shelves with more things than you could ever need. Enormous variety to cater to every want and need with room to spare. Now, I want you to imagine if your local supermarket was run democratically, instead of picking out what you wanted to buy, every four years you voted on what your shopping list was forced to look like. Let's say you prefer Coca-Cola over Pepsi. The best you can do is vote for Coca-Cola and hope that enough people prefer Coca-Cola that you're actually able to buy it in that four-year period. The problem is self-evident. With people having to campaign to have their preferences met, factionalism rises. Political philosophies like nutritionism and deliciousism rise. As people who prefer nutritious food are pitted against people who prefer tasty food, while those seeking a middle ground become centrists. They have every reason to if they don't seize the power of the state to impose a shopping list, then their rivals will. All you can really do to satisfy your individual wants and needs is vote and hope for the best. In this kind of situation, are your wants and preferences really being catered to? The problem is exacerbated even further when democracy marked becomes a representative democracy. Instead of voting for what the shopping list will look like directly, you vote for representatives who have their own shopping lists. What ends up happening is that you vote for candidate A because candidate A has 1% of the items on his list that you want compared to candidate B whose shopping list has 0% of the items that you want. Inevitably, these democratically elected shoppers become corrupt, taking bribes from food brands that want their items included on the shopping list, no longer accountable to consumers but to elected representatives. As a result, the quality of their product declines. After all, if they're on the shopping list, people will buy their food no matter what. What? The representatives are accountable to shoppers? Hardly. Because Pepsi is financing both the Coca-Cola Crat and Pepsi Publican candidates. They'll win no matter who wins. What incentive is there to create tastier and more nutritious foods? Candidates will bribe voters with free food paid for with money borrowed against the supermarket itself. This will inevitably result in increased debt, which will cause prices to increase, and this is just, it's just not sustainable. Democracy Mart ends up in a downward spiral of debt and price inflation until the creditors just won't lend them any more money, and inevitably, Democracy Mart collapses, attempting to cater to the needs of the majority, but it ended up catering to the needs of nobody. The defense of this model of supermarkets is legion. Oh, if you want to buy things from your shopping list, you should campaign harder. It's up to you to convince people your shopping list is best. Candidate A broke his campaign promise to include Coca Cola on his shopping list. Well, that's just how politicians are. It's those darn evil Pepsi publicans stopping us Coca Cola crats from getting our Coke. And let's not talk about the deliciousists who cost us the election. The media is telling us how the democratically elected Pepsi publican store owner is a puppet of uh, B Tuesday, the restaurant chain. How about that incident in Charlottesville when deliciousists crashed with nutritionist advocates over local food line no longer stocking Reese's peanut butter cups? Oh, and we can't have a capitalist supermarket. Because what about Moreau's, uh, I mean, Isles? Also, if we have a capitalist supermarket, warlords will just take over, and they'll impose their own shopping lists. It'll be chaos. But if you don't like Democracy Mart, then you can move. Under capitalism, everyone's needs are met. Brands compete to serve better, more nutritious food that appeals to the most people and we are all better off for it. Why is it then that when it comes to something as consequential as economics or social issues, 
We accept a one-size-fits-all solution designed through mobocracy. I don't accept this. It doesn't matter if it's democratic or not. It's not legitimate. And this can't be the most efficient way to organize our society. It's not even the most efficient way to organize a supermarket. This isn't to say that dictatorship or monarchy is any better. Deciding democratically what everyone's shopping list must be forced to look like is bad, but it's preferable to one guy getting to decide and being able to decide throughout his lifetime. Just, just leave us alone. Let us determine what our own shopping lists should look like. Stop forcing yours down our throats. Let us shop. Okay? Okay.